And joining us now to talk more about reactions is Politico White House reporter Nancy Cook and Washington Post reporter Amber Phillips. And still here is CBSN political contributor Caitlin Huey Burns. Thanks to all of you for joining us. And Caitlin, thanks for sticking around. Maria Butina is now being held without bail because she is a flight risk. She's also been accused of conspiracy against the U.S. How then do the president's comments in Helsinki play into this case? Caitlin, would you like to respond first? Yeah, well, it was certainly a very stark contrast between seeing that come out and the president's comments that uh, in terms of, of, of not being able to say whether uh, Russia, in fact, meddled in the election. Now, he has you know, kind of walked that back, but this also shows the extent to which uh, Russia did this. Remember, just last Friday, he had those indictments uh, from coming from DOJ of Russian nationals, and, of course, that was hovering over this summit. And so this this does show the extent to which uh, this was going on. Nancy, how, how do you think this arrest, uh, what kind of light does it shed on Helsinki? Well, I think it really just shows that there was a concerted effort, um, you know, in a bunch of different ways, either through cybersecurity attacks, but also through sort of in-person people on the ground who are trying to infiltrate you know, conservative organizations that Russia is really taking very seriously these efforts to, uh, you know, infiltrate U.S. political systems and also influence elections. And that's pretty key as we're heading into the midterms. And, you know, the tricky thing is, is that the president sort of standing side by side with Putin didn't necessarily appear to take those concerns very seriously. And I think that has a lot of Republicans and election experts uh, and Democrats obviously very concerned heading into a really key midterm election when there's going to be a huge battle for the House and the Senate. And Amber, what is your take then on the timing of Butina's arrest and the summit? Yeah, I think it, it is a striking uh, difference between what Trump is saying. And I think not only are some of Trump's critics using this to suggest that or to illustrate, really, that Russia's attempt to interfere in American democracy is very real. Uh, counterintelligence officials who feel attacked by Trump's uh, position in Helsinki are doing that, too. And let me pull up a quote uh, from a former U.S. official with knowledge of the investigation who told my Washington Post colleagues, to anyone who doubts that the Russian counterintelligence threat is real, this complaint against Butina should be further proof it's a threat that is live, real, and urgent that the country needs to grapple with. So interesting. So here's my next question to all of you. Do you think that the right is warming up to Russia, considering the connections Butina had and was developing while in the U.S. through the NRA and other organizations? Caitlin, what say you? I mean, the Republicans have traditionally been very anti-Russia, but is that changing Abs in some corners? Absolutely. And you saw just there the uh, picture of Scott Walker, who, right. of course, is running for re-election as Wisconsin governor uh, in November. Um, you know, the, the really interesting thing about this whole conversation is where Republicans find themselves as as it pertains to Russia. Remember, just six years ago, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan ran on a ticket calling, uh, on the presidential ticket, calling Russia the greatest geopolitical foe. And so now we're six years removed from that, and Republicans find themselves in this very strange uh, world in which they're, the president of their own party is trying to warm up to Russia and kind of disregarding a lot of the work that they've been doing in Congress. Remember, these committees in the House the Senate looking into Russian meddling uh, are led by Republicans. And when you look at the evidence coming from especially the Senate Intelligence Committee, and I just mentioned that because it's considered a much more bipartisan than uh, the House one, the, the investigation is still going on. Right. The Mueller probe is still going on. And yet you have the president here taking a very different tone, even as his own administration uh, takes a different tone than what he's been talking about. Are you seeing on the fringes of the right, perhaps, a certain change of heart toward Russia? Uh, yeah, I think that this entire week has given an opportunity to some of those people on the fringe of Republican Party politics to jump into the mainstream. One of those is Senator Rand Paul, who has been one of Trump's most vocal defenders on Capitol Hill throughout the entire week. Uh, Rand Paul is a non-interventionist who thinks that we should talk to all countries for the most part, regardless of, of what kind of things they may have done to the U.S. And, and Paul is really seizing this moment to say, look, 
you guys in, in Congress have all ignored me for years, but the President of the United States and I agree on this uh, topic. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a potential for that to really shift where the Republican base stands on Russia. Very, very interesting. All right, now, the President mentioned the 2018 midterm elections during his conference yesterday. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Unlike previous administrations, my administration has and will continue to move aggressively to repeal any efforts and repel. We will stop it. We will repel it. Any efforts to interfere in our elections. We're doing everything in our power to prevent Russian interference in 2018. He did leave open some doubts as to whether the Russians were continuing to meddle. That was apparently cleared up today by Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She, she said the administration believes that, yes, it's an ongoing threat. But, Caitlin, what do you think? Do you think that, the, that President Trump is taking this threat seriously? Or do you think that he really believes that it is not so um, ominous? Right. Well, given what he said while standing next to Putin in Helsinki, there are a lot of questions about how invested, whether and how invested this president is in making sure this doesn't happen again. Uh, president Trump is very much wanting to get away from the 2016 election insofar as the Russian intervention uh, meddling is concerned. He is concerned and, and kind of thinks that to acknowledge the interference is to somehow uh, delegitimize his own election. So he has said that he doesn't want to dwell on the past. But, of course, the question is uh, the continuation of interference, which intelligence agency and agencies in its own DNI have confirmed, and also uh, heading into November. Now, Sarah Sanders said we're not having an election today, but remember that this, uh, according to the indictments that we've seen, the, the interference took place over months and in various different ways and was kind of really widespread through social media and other ways. And so we are in an election right now as we speak. Right. You, you make a point that some others have mentioned that he seems so sensitive to the idea that there could be any question as to whether he right. won the election, that it prevents him from being totally clear-eyed about the, the Russian threat. Right. Um, Caitlin, Nancy, Amber, thanks to all of you for being with us. Thank you very much.